So there's a lot of debate on you know, what would be the right way to, to uh, get this data across. Uh, so right now, online in December 2014, we launched a data portal uh, that is the first concept that we had on how we would present this data. Um, the, the website has both information on contextual information about the extractive sector and actual uh, data on the revenues. And when we were designing this, we were under the, the new standard, and so we had to figure out uh, not just how we would just produce a report with the, with, the, uh, with the revenues, but also how we would meet the contextual narrative and other requirements uh, under the new standard. We developed this using um, a, a group of uh, IT professionals that the administration brought on board um, to help uh, to help the, the government find out how can we better use technology to get our data across to the, the, the general public. The basic process was, it was called a user-designed or user-centered process. And so we, we had folks from the government sector, we had folks from the industry sector and the civil society um, come around the table and figure out, you know, what is it each, each sector would want um, in terms of the, of the data that's, that's displayed. Uh, we had personas to serve examples of people who would uh, interact with the website. We, we, we started to, to figure out if we focus just on the requirements and not on what the users wanted to see, there would be sort of a disconnect in terms of the, the use of the site and, uh, and what people actually wanted to gain from it. And so we spent a lot of time setting up uh, users and gathering those users to be included in the actual design process. So when you go on the website, one of the first screens that you will see is this screen, which describes uh, our federal resource royalties by sector. Um, this information can be sorted uh, by commodity and by year. And when you click on each of these uh, commodities, the, the number changes. In, in the middle of the screen so that you can immediately see the impact in terms of the revenues. You can also sort by going on each year uh, to see what the revenues were generated by year. A lot of the, uh, the screens on this site also start with a question posed. And one of the things that they're still working on right now is how best to guide the public that may not know a lot about the extractive industries and what information may be relevant to suggest uh, what information uh, you may want to know. And so we did that by developing some questions um, that we would have as a header for each page. And on this page, we have displayed uh, by geography and location. Um, you, can, you can click on a state and find out information about federal leases and production that occurs in that state geographically. You can do the same thing for offshore, for our offshore regions. Here in the Gulf, we have the Western and Central and Eastern Gulf planning area. And you can click on any of these and the same information will be displayed in terms of the number of the leases um, and uh, producing and non-producing. You'll also find that uh, you can, uh, Greg is pointing out, that you can also do this by commodity um, if you wanted to sort in that way. You'll find that we also included a lot of uh, layperson definitions to some of these terms that are uh, you know, known to, uh, to an experienced user, but not necessarily to a person you know, who lives in the community that wants to figure out you know, what, why would this information be relevant to me. So you'll find that on a lot of the site, you'll have definitions of uh, what producing and what non-producing means. We learned that folks wanted to have an easy way to sort of distinguish you know, w w the offshore revenues from the onshore revenues and where those revenues were going. And so in these large circles, you have uh, proportionately where most of the revenues go, so that circle is bigger, um, to the US Treasury. You'll notice that there are two colors as well. The blue represents the revenues from offshore and the green the revenues from onshore, when, where those revenues go. And if you click on any one of these, windows, you will, uh, the, the amount of revenues and information about that will be displayed. 
So this screen represents, um, for the first time, uh, the Office of Natural Resources Revenue producing data by company, by commodity, and by revenue type. Um, this represents calendar year 2013 data. Um, and it's, uh, it took us a while to sort of compile this data because we were dealing with information from various bureaus, et cetera. But um, the team did a lot of good work in coming up with uh, quality, reliable data that we have that we already produced, but never before in this format. The other thing about this screen, you will find that you have these data documentation download opportunities. So if you were, to, if you were focusing in on one company, say ExxonMobil, and you wanted to find out from Exxon uh, the amount of revenues they produce for oil and gas, and you wanted a report of that, you can select Exxon, that, that information will be pulled up and displayed, and you can download just that data set, and that will produce a report for you in an Excel screen that you can use um, any way you want it. So in terms of where we're going from here, this was launched, as I said, in December of 2014. And uh, right now, we are scheduled to produce our first EITI report in December of 2015. And we're working on how we will put together all the contextual data that's required under the standard and use this online uh, portal um, as really the EITI report and have uh, a short document that basically gives a summary of the report, but use this online portal as uh, the main source of the information from our EITI report. How is it that most Americans uh, consume uh, information was one of the questions that they grappled with. And information such as the amount of adults that use the internet, for example, that's 87% in the US, and or that have a mobile device of some sort, mostly a smartphone, that's about 58% of the uh, consumers in the US. So they're gonna do a lot of work with adapting the site to be used on mobile devices for one thing. And this information is telling us that in terms of uh, getting um, increasing public debate and building capacity among the average American consumer, that online is, is the way to go. We're looking at reconfiguring the site in different ways where it will be driven by those questions that a user may have. Um, and so when you, when you come on the site, you will uh, you'll be able to immediately see um, if this question is something that's on your mind when you came to the site, then this will be the area that you want to go in. Um, tell me about extractive industries generally. Sometimes you, geographically you may be in a community um, in, down in the Gulf, uh, and that's what you want to focus in on. You want to focus in on how many revenues are coming from the Gulf in general or the state of Louisiana or you may be onshore in Wyoming and coal country, and that's what you're focused on. And so we're trying to make the site um, as responsive to those needs as possible. So we've been uh, struggling uh, to sort of find out and get a barometer for the interest level of the average uh, American citizen in this type of data. Um, and it's an ongoing process. Uh, we found, we have found, however, what we're doing right now is uh, one of the things we can do with the online presence is we can measure through Google Analytics um, the type of users that are coming to the site. And our secretariat is um, measuring that and, and is reporting on that monthly to, as one of the ways. But, um, you know, if, if you're talking about when we do listening sessions and, and go out uh, across the country, Greg and I uh, did that before we launched just to figure out who would be appropriate members for the MSG and uh, we've done that periodically and you know it's mixed results <laughs> sometimes very little people show up but um, one of the things we found however is that if you don't have some kind of proof of concept most people say well that sounds interesting let me know what that looks like um, and so without a report it's somewhat difficult to get people interested in uh, in what that could be, and one of the reasons why we went to this online uh, platform, because then our outreach could be quite vast, and we could use various channels to point them to this to get that feedback. For the, part of the feedback loop that we've created is for uh, any user, anyone, to uh, comment 
um, on the site, raise questions or offer suggestions, but it's not right now in a real time format. So, but that information is taken back by the user design team um, and they regularly look at that information, um, but I don't think we have it, uh, it's certainly not in real time and uh, I don't think we have it where we respond specifically to a specific comment. Those comments are simply used in the user design process um, as part of the feedback. Yeah.